All right, everyone, uh, this is my attempt at giving a tutorial on how to use our mixer. It is a Behringer X32 producer. It's a mini version. Um, it's got 16 channels that can be expanded to, to way, way more. Um, in fact, I think we're running 32 channels, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but first of all, let me just show you how to power it up. We have a master power switch that is down here. It is one of the uh, things that we plugged into, hard, hard wired it, drilled it into the actual case. So if you click on this, then everything should power up at this moment. Uh, all our wireless mic system, everything like that is powered onto it as well. The X32, as you can see there, is powering up. If for some reason, after you turn on the master, it doesn't power up, there is a power button on the back of here. Uh, the back of the panel that you just need to click on. It's all connected to that master uh, 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 power surge protector there. Um, the first thing that you do after you power it up, I wanna point your attention here to this interface. So this is the computer that is driving this mixer. If I haven't said anything yet, this is a digital mixer. So it has a, everything that you need it, need is in it. That being said, it is a bit, uh, there is a steep learning curve. Uh, all that being said is once you have an understanding of how to work this, then it is actually a, a pretty powerful machine. I probably only know how to use about 25% of what it's able to do here. But the very first thing that you're gonna do when you turn it on is you're gonna go to this button here, it's gonna say scenes. And I'm the only one here on the camera, so uh, I'm not being able to zoom in on this, but this is scenes. If you press scenes, all our pre-stored mixes, our default mixes will be here. And you're gonna see here, we only have one right now at the top, it's called Stream Bose. Uh, there's a couple down here that says Jeff on it. He's one of the audio engineers that came and helped us out, uh, gave me a tutorial on that. But let's say, hypothetically, let's say there are multiple different um, uh, 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 saves there. All you have to do is just toggle using this left toggle here. They all turn and they also click down. So you simply go to the Stream Bose and you click on it. Then it's gonna ask you a question, load scenes, and using this cursor here, you either say no or yes. And if, if you say yes, what's gonna happen is everything that we pre-saved, our default settings will load up. That's really important because sometimes we'll have cajon, sometimes we'll have a violin, sometimes we may have some different instruments, and we fit it around with some of the, the, the faders and some of the gains and some of the EQs. And this particular Sunday, we have our default setting then instead of having to go and manually redo, readjust everything, all you have to do is go to the scenes, load it up, and you're ready to go. The other really neat thing about this is, let's say you accidentally press something wrong, or you accidentally messed around with somebody's gain or the EQ, and you don't know how to undo that. Well, the beauty of it is, again, you just simply go to the scenes, load up the stream bows, and then whatever we had previously saved, it will load up, assuming that you didn't save what you messed up here with. So it'll preload it up so you won't have anything to worry about. You're going to be good to go with that as well. So that's the first thing that we need to understand. The second thing that we need to understand is that on here are inputs. Each fader has an input. And because this is a digital mixer, you don't know exactly which uh, fader you're actually selecting. Uh, because here you have channels 1 through 8. Here you have channels 9 through 16. Channels 17 through 24. 25 to 36, and then you have your aux channels here as well. So when you press these, then this, these eight faders here become whatever this green light is. So if I select one through eight, then this is channel one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If I select nine through 16, now this becomes nine, six, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. If I select 17 to 24, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and so forth and so on. So you have to make sure that not only are you selecting the right fader, but you have to make sure you're selecting the right channels. So here, we select channels one through eight. So what we're working on here at the top are our one through eight channels. If I need to adjust channel 10 or 11, then I need to go, or fader 10 or 11, then I need to go to channels nine through 16, and then count nine, 10, 11, 12, all right? But the other way in which you can understand what channel you're in is that if you select the input button here and it turns green, 
you'll have a little scribble strip up here that tells you what instrument that is. I've preloaded all of them with whatever instrument that is. So I'm in channel nine through 16. The first fader, so that's number nine. It'll tell you up here that number nine is the bass guitar. So you'll know exactly that this is the bass guitar. If I'm in channels one through uh, six, or excuse me, one through eight here, and then I select fader one, then I'll know it says it'll have a male figure and it has Josh. So this is Josh's vocal setting. If I select two, then it'll have female lead. If I select three, it'll have male. So most of the time that's Brian Clark. And if I have four, then we have uh, lead two, meaning if Brian Hong or Ju Young or perhaps even myself are leading, then we can adjust uh, their person's vocal, all the while leaving Josh's alone so that we don't ch touch Josh's. So you'll know here by selecting the faders and with that, the scribble will change which instrument you're actually going to be using. So those are just a few things that, that become second nature, but something that for us to understand. If we need to change a scribble, how do we do that? Well, you simply go to setup and then you select the channel that you want to change. So here we are in, ch in channels one through eight and we are on the eighth one. So it's going to tell us here it's violin. And so that's for Victor when he plays violin. But let's say hypothetically you want to change the scribble. So you select setup button here, which is the top right input. And then when you get there, you're going to see some tabs here. And then the way you get to the tabs again are with these cursors. And you just cursor over to scribble strip. And at this point, you can select which channel you're working on, just to confirm the channel, what color you want to set it at, what instrument icon you want to use, and what the actual snippet is going to say there. So that's the way in which you can change all of that. This is where uh, we are able to now talk about how do we adjust each person. So let's go back here to channel one, and we'll select Josh. So here, these are the levels are your faders. Generally speaking, now this is philosophically debated, but generally speaking, you want to have your levels at zero. So your decibel at zero, um, which is kind of your, I forget what the actual technical terminology is, is but that's where you kind of want to be at. Um, and so the, if you notice here, they're all at zero. So how do you then adjust each sound to make sure that they're at zero? Because in Technically, yeah, you can lower the fader and they'll be quiet, and if you raise it, it'll be loud. But what we want to do is adjust it so that the default setting that we want is at zero for all the instruments. We do that by changing the gain. So the gain is uh, how much decibel levels are actually coming in. So if I raise it, and these are all like half click, you'll see it lit up half and then full, half, then full. Um, this is how you change the gain. So gains are exponentially louder than the faders here. So every half click here is going to increase the volume level significantly. Um, so that's how you adjust each individual so that they are at a zero decibel here on the fader. Same thing with the different vocals. If you notice, everyone's gain slightly different up here at the top, but that gives us a zero here on the decibel. All right, and that's what we try to do with all the instruments. If you look over here, that'll be exactly the same. Channel 10, we don't use anymore. So in fact, that can stay muted. Uh, that's why it's down here. But everything else, we try to theoretically stay at the zero decibel at all times. The next thing that we need to understand here is that what makes this really powerful is that every person's voice, every person's uh, instrument is a little bit different. They're all gonna sound a little bit different. They're gonna have different tone. They're gonna have different timbre. They're gonna have different uh, 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 just basic aesthetics to it, right? And so this is where a little bit of the art comes in. How do you make it sound the way you want it to sound? So every sound engineer is gonna have a little bit different ear. And I do not, by any stretch of the imagination, proclaim to be a sound engineer. I'm just doing this because I had to, right? That being said, what's really neat about the uh, uh, digital mixer is that Every person, and I haven't done this for everyone yet, uh, but every person can have their pre-record or pre-loaded EQs. So for example, let's go over to uh, channel number four. So channel number four is going to be our different uh, leads. So sometimes it'll be Brian Hong, sometimes it'll be uh, uh, Chu Young, sometimes it might be me. And so every single time then you have to come here and the way you get to the EQ, let me show you here, is you go to the home scene, you take the cursor, and you just tab over to the EQ, and every single person's EQ is gonna be different. So what 
we did in the past is that every time, whether it's Chu Young or Brian or myself, whoever is not your regular lead, we'd have to go in there and manually readjust the EQ every single Sunday to their voice. And if you do that every single Sunday, it, it, it adds up the time and, and the sound quality, it, it adjusts, it's, it's not consistent. That being said, what we can do though is that we can adjust it, we can adjust to whatever EQ that we want, and then you go to utility, which is the bottom right tab here in the EQ setting, and there's a lot of preloaded stuff here, but what you do is you go down to this and you go to an empty blank tab here, and you can save the preset. So you save it. And so you save it as Chuyong, or you save it as Brian, or you save it as Peter, you save it as whomever or whatever. So then next time you have a different person going here, you select the channel, channel one through eight, fader number four. Then you just go to the utilities. And here, in this case, you're gonna use this top, the second one here. We are going to select that's here, Chuyang. So we'll select Chuyang. If I load Chuyang, it's going to ask you load preset to current channel, and I select yes with the cursor. Chuyang's vocal uh, EQ is preloaded, and now we're good to go on Sunday. We don't have to fiddle. You may have to tweak it a little bit, but the baseline of, uh, of how his vocals sound, we're good to go. Same thing here with channel six. Oftentimes in channel six is the secondary guitar. Josh's guitar is on channel five. Uh, it's channel six is secondary guitar, so sometimes Brian's guitar, Chu Young's guitar, my guitar, uh, and every guitar, again, it's gonna sound very, very different. The way in which we make it simple is that you go to the channel, and you go to utilities, just like we did for vocals, and you, you toggle here, and if you look here, I'll have, I don't know if you can see this in the video, but I have a setting for Chu Young Ju guitar, so if I want Chu Young's guitar, I select that, or Taylor, that's my guitar, uh, or Brian, uh, uh, there's a Fender uh, Gibson. Brian uses a Gibson. So if I select the Gibson, the setting that I have for his Gibson is now preloaded. We don't have to, again, fiddle with it. We don't have to adjust it uh, on a large scale, but we preload the setting and we may have to do a little bit of a tweak and we're good to go. So he, his guitar, uh, Ju Young's voice, they're all preloaded here. You just go to the utility, you upload it, and it'll go into whatever spader you selected. You can save anybody's voices. You can save anyone's uh, uh, instrument as well. We'll do it one more time here, channel two. We have sometimes different singers, uh, Lena or perhaps Glory in the past or, or a Michaela now. So again, you go to fader number two, you go to utilities, and then you look for their voice here. Over here, you'll see Lena's voice. And over here, you'll see Michaela's voice. So we'll select Michaela's voice. And then it'll preload Michaela's EQ setting and you're going to be good to go, okay? The next thing that we're going to talk about here is what we call our DCAs. Um, DCAs are using this side of the board. So again, the default setting is each of these channels occupy eight faders. So channels one through eight, eight, nine through 16, eight. Um, what we're trying, what we're going to do, or what we do here at the church, is we now use these sides here as well. So the theory is, on a given Sunday, you're not going to have to go and adjust all of these individually. Theoretically, doesn't happen always. Is all we have to do is now just adjust this side. So what we do is we group them all together. So for example, here on the, it says here group DCA one through eight. So these are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We can group each of these channels uh, on the right side here with any number on our left. So here we group channel one, and when I say one on the, the DCA side, channel one, we put vocals here. So if you select here, all of our vocals are selected here. So if I click, and you can tell which ones you selected, because if I hold this, then the four channels here that are the vocals are connected to this channel here. So why is that important? Well, if I just need to raise the vocals, the entire group, instead of individually raising everyone here, I just have to move this lever up, fader up just a little bit, and the entire group's voice will go up. Or if I need to lower the entire groups down, then the entire group's voice will go down. But the best reasoning for that is if I just need to mute them. So for example, if I'm going up there to speak, oftentimes my mic, the speaker's mic, 
and the vocalist mics sometimes loop and it creates a nasty feedback. So all I have to do is instead of going there and muting every one of them, I just mute this particular channel, then all of them are automatically muted. Now the ones that are blinking tells you that it's only muted because I muted it on the DCA group. If it's solid, it's actually telling you that it's muted in the actual channel itself. So don't go in here and try to unmute them because if you actually do that, you're actually now muting them on the channel. And if you unmute this, you're like, everything's gonna still stay muted. Rather, just know that when they're blinking, that they're not muted on the channel, they're only muted on the DCA. So as soon as I unmute that, they're all good to go. Same thing with the guitars. Uh, we grouped the two guitars together. Not that big of a deal. The keys and the violin, we grouped them all together. Whereas really important is on the percussion. If, you, if I, I switch over to 916, if I select percussion, all of them are now grouped together. And so if the drum as a whole is too loud, then I'll just lower the entire drum. Or if I need to simply mute the entire drum mix, instead of having to go there and mute every single one of them, I just press that. And again, they're all blinking because they're only muted on this DCA, not in the channels themselves or the faders themselves, only number 10 because we don't use that anymore for the time being. And so then for the service, we start like this. The only one that we generally have unmuted is the aux, which is connected to our uh, sound from the computer that's playing. And then when we're ready to uh, transition from our intro music to the actual service itself, what we'll do is we'll lower this main fader, not have to worry about that, mute this, then unmute these guys, and then we're now good to go for our service. And we do that also for our speakers as well, uh, speaker mics. Uh, they'll tell you exactly which ones are used. This is mic number 17, which is the handheld mic. Mic number 18 is my headset that I generally use, and we also have a lavalier, but we don't use that often, so that stays muted. So that's kind of how this whole DCA grouping works. So hopefully that makes sense, all right? And there's other things that we can do, but we're, we'll, we'll stop there with regards to how the channels and the DCA works. Now, um, how do you put effects toward the vocals or the instruments? This is a little bit next level, um, but I will try to walk us through this. Um, the way in which effects work is there's actually multiple steps that you have to do. So uh, only watch this if you're really interested um, in terms of, let me rephrase that. Uh, you need to watch this to ha actually how, how to use the effects in terms of managing the effects on a given Sunday, but you don't necessarily need to watch this to learn how to use it. So here's what I mean by this. So um, the effects are grouped onto this last DCA channel. So really on Sundays, all you have to do is raise this. This will uh, ultimately add effects to our vocals. And really only the vocals have effects. We remove effects from everything else. Okay, so this is how you use the effects. On a given Sunday, all you need to worry about is this particular channel. Again, if it's muted, it's not gonna work. Just keep it unmuted. This is how much effects we're adding to the vocals. Uh, generally, we'll start here, and then when that's the song crescendos, we'll give it a little bit more. Um, also here, uh, this blinking light is our uh, delay, and we want to put the delay in time with the song. So this one, you tap along with the music. Generally, uh, eighth beat is probably, maybe a quarter note is what you want to do. So if the song is going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, then you tap along, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and register that, then it will actually then uh, put the, re, uh, excuse me, the, uh, uh, the delay on that beat. Okay, um, so a couple other things. This is next level step for the effects. So how do we add effects to the channels? Well, this is now we're gonna go into what are called the bus channels. Um, this is where it gets a little bit confusing. As I mentioned, these are your faders, one through 32 plus your auxes. These are now DC groupings, but if I press here, these are now our bus. These channels on the right side become something else. Uh, these are used to send certain signals out. This is how we used to do our stream. Um, or they're also to send certain signals in. So these are bus. So all you need to know here for this moment is that we are generally on a Sunday actively using buses, numbers, uh, what is this? 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. These are the only two that we're generally using, 13 and 14. Um, 13 and 14, what are they? Again, if I select here, these are our effects. 13 is our chorus. 
This is what gives it a kind of the reverb. And 14 is our delay. That gives you that, that it'll have a sound, and then it'll have a sound behind that, but much fainter. So it gives a, a, an ambiance of a bigger space. It actually helps with the vocals and things like that. So buses 13 and 14 are the only ones that we're using. And how do we know where, where they're being sent? Again, this is next level. If I press on sends on fader, it will tell me exactly where these guys are being sent. So uh, if I press on sends on fader, it's gonna tell me that uh, effects number 14 are going into channels one, two, three, four, and I'm sending this much into it. I'm sending this much here and then I'm adding it to this much there. If I select 13, it'll tell me I'm setting this much into it as well, a little bit on the violin because that is what Victor had asked. Um, and so it's going to these channels here. Um, so if I were to put, press send on faders, I could send it to anything. I could send it to here now. If I do that, then that's how much uh, uh, chorus is gonna go to these effects, but we're not gonna do that. So this will tell you exactly where the uh, delay in the chorus are being sent. If you look at the drums, we're not sending them anywhere. We do have a little bit just a touch of chorus on the uh, overhead mics uh, for the drums, but nowhere else gets chorus. Same thing here, if I select uh, the, re, uh, the delay, only the vocals get some delay, nowhere else gets delays. So that's how you uh, send certain effects to certain channels. Now these effects can be changed up here. Uh, you can have different effects that come preloaded as uh, uh, a digital mixer, but we will not look at that. That's beyond our scope, we don't need to know that. Um, so we are just running off of uh, chorus and delay. Now because we are in bus, these little tabs that I put here, they, are, they don't apply. We are in a bus situation, bus channel number 13 and 14. So hopefully that doesn't confuse you too well. Um, and then if I don't, if I then unclick sends on fader, then it'll return back, we're still in the bus. And if we adjust anything here, we're in trouble because we are not in the right group. We need to go back to the DCA groups. Then we're able to now go back and adjust whatever we need to do. Hopefully that makes sense. So the next step in terms of effects is not only do we need to assign which channels are getting which effects, we actually then, the final step that we have to do is go to this channel here in the DCA group, go to effects return. We've designated these one, two, three, four as uh, effects. They're, they're stereo, so they will move in sync. So effects to the left, effects to the right, effects to the left, effects to the right, they're, they're one channel each. So this is now how much effects we're actually pumping again into the vocals. Too much effects will start feeding back. So we're generally around minus 20 decibels here. And so uh, this is how much we have set here. So this much is now gonna go into the channels that we've designated for the effects. So hopefully that's making sense. And the last thing really on a Sunday is this. So based on all that, we've now have X amount of effects going into channels one, two, three, four. Here is what we're gonna do on a Sunday to maximize how much effects that we want on that channel. Hopefully that makes sense. So let me run it through one more time just, just so that you understand what's going on here. So again, to to adjust the effects, we go to bus channel 9 through 16, and we're going to be looking at 13 and 14. 13 is your chorus, 14 is your delay. How do we know which channels get it? Then you press sends on fader. It's basically saying we are sending this to which fader. Now we're sending, uh, we'll start here at chorus. We're sending it to channels 1, 2, 3, 4, and 8. We're also sending a little bit to the drums. In fact, I'm actually gonna probably delete that. Let's get rid of that. So the drums don't have any more effects. And so only the, the chorus is getting effects. Same thing here with delay, nothing else is getting effects. Only channels one, two, three, four are getting effects. Then we're gonna clear out of the sends on fader. Then we're gonna go back to DCA group. And then we have to go one more step to return effects. So this is how much of the chorus how much of the delay we actually wanna to add to the channels that we've designated. So we're gonna set these at minus 20. And the last thing is, this is the final control. How much of all of that we just did are we gonna to send to the channels that have effects? Okay, so hopefully that makes some sense. And that's how we run our services on Sunday. Um, so all that being said here, we generally want the main to be at about minus five to zero. Uh, the reason why that might get adjusted is that the both speakers at top, they also have their own master gain, 
we want that master gain to be set at about four o'clock. There, there's a number ga gauge there, so about four o'clock. Um, sometimes I'll get twisted, a uh, turn, and it might be too powerful. And if we don't go up there and change it, then we may just have to lower the gain here. If it gets touched up there, then uh, or or uh, decrease up there, then we may have to raise the gains here. But really, we want again this at zero. The theory is to have everything at zero. Uh, and so sometimes that may require you to go up to the bow speaker and adjust the master gain themselves. So that is a quick tutorial on how to turn this thing on and how to use it uh, from a week to week basis. So hopefully uh, this helps. Hopefully this makes some sense. Um, and if you have any other questions, please contact me and I'd love to walk it through with you all. Oh, and one more thing in terms of how to connect our sound to the stream. Um, so everything that we've done is for the house sound. As I mentioned before, buses one through eight technically, technically are for our uh, uh, stream mix. So this is how we would, have, this is how we used to do it. But the reason why we don't use it anymore is that we need another device that amplifies that sound and uh, we just don't want to deal with that right now. And, and as a result, these buses aren't giving enough sound for the stream. So we're using a, something that probably will get laughed at by real engineers. But what we're doing is we're simply using the phone auxiliary out. So what you hear in the church is what you hear at home. And so what we do is we take a splitter, quarter inch splitter, and then we connect one side to the uh, ATEM, which is, uh, you can't see it over here, but ATEM is what we use to uh, broadcast our signal to the internet for our YouTube stream. And the other side we connect it to the actual headphones that we're supposed to be using for what it's for. And that gives a little bit more of an amplified sound and that seems to work well for us. So uh, that is my basic tutorial on how to work this X32 producer from Behringer. It's phenomenal. Um, again, I only know about 25% of this thing. There's so many things that I'm leaving out. Uh, you can actually do the EQs here along with there. Uh, you can configure gates and uh, um, dynamics and all that stuff, but that's next level and, and I'm still learning all that stuff myself, but this will give you a general idea of how to use our mixer for Sunday services. Um, and uh, if you wanna go deeper, I'd love to talk to you more about it, but if not, that's about as all that you need to know. Hopefully that's been helpful and uh, thank you again in advance for your service to the church and the community.